The following show contains adult content. It's not our intent to offend anyone, but we want to inform you that if you are a child under the age of 18 or get offended easily, this next show may not be for you. The content, opinions, and subject matter of these shows are solely the choice of your show hosts and their guests, and not those of the Entertainment Network or any affiliated stations. Any comments or inquiries should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for listening. Yay! What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, bringing you the good times in music, fashion, and pop culture and entertainment. And I want to say real quick that that song was uh, done by Ozzy Aziz, our opening song, and yesterday was his birthday. So happy birthday, Ozzy. And uh, Her birthday was yesterday? Yes. I didn't wish her a happy birthday. I have to today. Absolutely. <laughs> is, so, my, is my mic too low? No, I hear you fine. I think you're okay. okay. Everybody, can you hear us in the chat room? Um, so anyway, we want to... Uh, uh say hi to everybody before we get started let me just uh, first say hi to my gorgeously handsome cool outrageous man about town co-host mr ron russell not in a good mood <laughs> okay <laughs> and then we got a chat room full of people and they my, roxy says our mics are good we have a chat room full of people what's up everybody in the chat room Teresa Teresa saban b claudia from germany jason taylor don hinton Backpack John, Hub Reynolds, Lady Lake Music, lots of people coming in. Hello, everybody, and I hope all everybody's doing well. we got a fun show for you today. Um, we're going to have Nina Bergman coming on, and uh, a lot of people know her from all the movies that she's been in. She's fabulous, uh, and she's also a phenomenal rock star. And then we also have Stacy Toy coming back, this time with Gil Lorero. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce his name. So there with the NFT drop. It should be like a lot of fun. So happy to see everybody in the chat room, and we're going to have a lot of fun with you guys today. Of course, you don't care why I'm not in a good mood. Okay, why are you not in a good mood? Oh, look at how cool we look. I know. Because <laughs> we have such winds in California. Unbelievable 74-mile-an-hour winds blowing the desert into my house. My house is covered in sand, not dust, sand. We were having a concrete walkway put on the side of the house, which was all desert. And that was promoting the sand to blow up through the bathroom window all over the place. Well, living in these gated communities that are supposed to be so wonderful, you can't do jack crap without getting an approval. I didn't know that. I said to Jimmy, do we need an approval? Jimmy said, no, 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 no. It's the side of the house. You only need an approval for the front lawn. I said, okay, I'm going to go and check. I went and I checked and the guy said, oh no, you need a permit to put the concrete down on the sidewalk. I said, it's a walkway. It's the side of my house. Nobody sees it from the street. He said, yes, I know, but you need a permit. Not a permit, permission from the, uh, what is it called? The, the, the those kamikaze the people, the board. <clears throat> kamikaze people. I call them kamikazes. Anyway, we uh, did the stuff, photographs and drawings, and like, you think what the hell it was. It is a concrete walkway, period. So we couldn't have it done to, to tomorrow as it was scheduled, which is screwing everything up because they're supposed to knock out the bedroom wall and put the sliding glass doors in. And I'm just frustrated with what's going on today. It's difficult to get workmen because they say they're coming and then they don't come. And then you don't hear from them. And then suddenly they appear and get annoyed because you're not ready for them. Well, how would I know you're coming if you don't tell me and if you're not coming when you're supposed to? Anyway, I'm exhausted. I'm tired of the wind. I'm tired of the sand. It's destroyed a lot of our patio, my flowers, my beautiful Rose. iceberg roses. They're not there anymore. All the petals were blown off. Now I have greenery. 
So that's enough complaining for the day. They so say your hair looks beautiful. My hair looks beautiful. You think so? Yep. I used to wear it like this they in nine, see your watch. nineteen my in 1954. I wore my hair like this. I'm very retro lately. The wristwatch I'm wearing is a 40, and it matches the shirt that I'm wearing. 49. That's the uh, first one you got. That was the very first. That's one. my very first 49. Yes. Anyway, we'll have a good fun show because the gal that's coming on next. I'm totally impressed by, you know, she's really quite beautiful and a, a lovely person. So we're going to have a good show. So we have a lot of fun, you guys, today. Um, at, actually, uh, we were at a movie premiere a couple weeks ago for um, the Maybelline Prince, which is a friend of Ron's, had a movie premiere. We had a good time. And we were both looking at uh, this girl. And I knew I knew her, but I couldn't, wouldn't, couldn't figure out who she was. And she was Nina Bergman. And that's who's coming on the show today. Right. And I had met her on another project many, many years ago, but we had never actually like met. So we've been social media friends for probably ever since we lived beginning and started living in Pennsylvania. So probably about eight years, uh, but we had never met until that event. And now she's coming on the show and she is just phenomenal. So look, I think everybody's going to like love her. The millions of us. Look, it's like we have, we're an army on the TV screen behind us. I look. know. I like that. It's Hello. fun. <laughs> We're millions. Look, I have a million Ron Russells. My God, we can't even deal with one Ron Russell. Could you imagine if we had all of these Ron Russells? The world would be a good place to live in, that's for sure. Actually, oh, I don't know if we said hi to Hub Reynolds either. Hub Reynolds is in the chat room. Hub, what's going on, baby? How's the ranch? How's it come going? Do you have a new girlfriend yet? Oh, I'm just trying to get up. He's so handsome. I don't know how come this guy doesn't have like 100 women after him. He might have 100 women after him, but... I don't know that he really wants to get married. Hub, tell us, you want to get married? I think he just wants to play the field that he's going to be a big country music star. Yeah, he's just a seaman. <clears throat> Which I, <laughs> I'm not going to say anything more. Just a seaman, okay. Seaman, like, see you later, alligator man. That's Astro jumping up because he's on the show every week. Astro, say hi to your fans. Astro has fans. Yes, you have fans, you little pumpkin. Mm, well, actually, yeah. Dawn says uh, she watched Hell Hath No Fury, which is uh, is one of the newest movies that came out for Nina Bergman. I hope she liked it. I'm going to see it, too. And um, Sweet Pie. Sweetie I, I, I want to work with Nina. We're kind of uh, I will hear about it when I interview her. Right, Astro? Other than that, the wind's blowing and all the crap with the house. You know, you get have you if you've gone under construction in your house, you know what it's like. It's it's all discord. It's everything is upside down. Like the bedroom, we had to move all the furniture to one side of the room and then put up plastic uh, drop cloth walls so that when they blow out, because you know the, these houses are made out of stucco, and when you cut through stucco, you make a cloud of dust that you have never seen before in your life, and that dust just goes all over. It gets into the air conditioning vents. It is. <laughs> It's I know dust. We have dust everywhere. Ron complains. I'm, to, I'm never going to do You have to this. like dust and vacuum every day because <laughs> of the sand really? and the dust. I mean, you can't have a girl come once a week because by the time she comes back a week later, you're knee deep in boots walking around. And I'm not lying to you. The dust is, I could write in the dust. It's not he dust. He does every day. He writes on the, on, where the TV is in the bedroom on the, on the dresser. Dust me. He writes dust me every day after we dust it. <laughs> I mean, really, you know, and, and my daughters live in the next town over, which which is Palm Desert, and they live off of a golf course, which is all green. There's no sand, and their house is full of sand also, fine dust. It's not sand like at Jones Beach or, or Malibu Beach. It's like dust. It's like fine. But the sand here is not beige. It's black because it blows off the mountains, and it makes clouds that fly over Palm Springs. So I was thinking of writing a song. Black sand clouds over Palm Springs. I'm going to commit Harry Carey. Oh, <clears throat> anyway. He's so cute. Look at that. Now you can see his face, everybody. He's so Look cute. at that. Astro, say hi to your fans. He said it feels like your room, your mood is improving. <laughs> well, you know what? It, it does as I work because, you know, when you, everybody knows, if you have a, a problem in your private life, the minute you go to work, for some reason, that problem is gone. And I find that working uh, gets rid of my uh, inner thoughts because right now I have to interview someone and I have to make you people enjoy what you're watching. So that's a big responsibility, far more responsible than dusting. 
for sure. They, B. Claudia says Astro should write the forward to your book. <laughs> <laughs> right uh, isn't he cute Astro. look at him isn't he the most adorable precious thing in the world that's the one thing that always makes ron smile no oh, matter I what's live, going I on live for him he follows me all over he sleeps under my chin at night i find him staring at me i'm i make believe i'm sleeping i open my eyes very little and i could watch him and he thinks i'm sleeping he sits there and doesn't move he just stares at me and i swear to you it looks like he starts to smile because he shows you his teeth. He does smile. And he's not growling. He's smiling. I mean, dogs do smile. He loves me so much. Right, my money? And how Breno says, hook him up with somebody. <laughs> hook him up. Listen, gorgeous. I don't need to hook you up with anybody. You, you should go, just walk down could, the street. Yeah, just, you know, just wear, you know, pad your underwear a little. Put like a towel in your front, uh, in your jock strap. Put a, a towel like Tom Jones used to do. There you go. Go now into you any us, club right? and you'll have women throwing themselves at you. Just be sure and, you know, don't let them think that the towel is it. Did you get it? Yeah, I got it. Hub is a sexy I'm just looking... going from what no, Hub told me. A, Hub is a Hub sexy told me other times guy. before that he doesn't need to do that. Hub, okay, announcement Hub's girl. hung. Hey, announcement <laughs> girls, Hub doesn't need a towel. Now we really got you sold, Hub. He's so handsome and sexy and butch and cowboy. Girls, if you're really looking for to be ridden by a cowboy, contact Hub. Uh, let me do a he, quick... And, he, and also, he's a great singer. He, he does all that country stuff, that shit-kicking music. He's really good at it. So uh, let me do a quick commercial real quick. We want to thank everybody. Oh, for... I want to say something before you do a commercial. We watched Studio City. I love that show. Well, I Season love... two. Yeah, season two. I love Sean Kanan because he's a very close dear buddy of ours. And his wife, Michelle, wrote it. She won an Emmy for it. It's really an interesting show. And I would suggest that you all watch it. You'll get hooked. It's, uh, it, it's on Amazon it's, Prime. It's on. Yeah. It's, I'm not going to give it away, but it's good. Not because Sean's in it. If, even if he wasn't in it, I would like it. Also, uh, Dave Hughes just joined us. Hey, Dave. How's it going? Cause your weather in England, Australia. And, and Hub Reynolds wrote, laughing my country ass off. Who needs a towel? <laughs> good, good for you. Well, you know, I just do that. So I sort of, you know, prime you into the conversation. But now you're going to have chicks jumping all over you. You guys follow Hub Reynolds on all the social media sites. And he's really handsome um, and real sexy looking. So if you're a woman out there looking to meet a nice guy and possibly marriage down the road, you know, I, how can they reach him? Go to go social to his, media. Hub Reynolds yeah. Jr. Go to Hub Reynolds Jr. Send naked pictures of yourselves <laughs> yeah. and see if he likes it. <sighs> then he'll send you back naked pictures of himself. Teresa Saban says, "You go, Hub." <laughs> <laughs> well, with a dating game. <laughs> Remember the show, The Dating Game, on television a thousand years ago. Well, with with it, Bia Claudia says you you brought up Tom Jones, so she says she adores Tom Jones, and then Don wrote an Engelberg Humperdinck. <laughs> well, the two of them were were so weird. Uh, you know, I never met Humperdinck, but I was in Las Vegas, and he was playing, I believe, at Caesar's Palace. This is like fifty years ago, and um, he was weird looking. He was handsome, but in a weird way. Anyway, after the show, he came down into the audience and was shaking hands with people. And when he got to me, he stopped and he shook my hand. And he said, don't I know you? I said, of course you do. I said, I'm an Academy Award winning actor. He said, oh, yeah, that's right. And he kept walking the jerk. <laughs> I'm an Academy Award winning actor, I wish. But, you know, you tell these people crap like you could walk up to a famous movie star, right? Like, walk up to Angelina Jolie and say, oh, I know you. Didn't we meet, like, last thousand years ago in blah, blah, blah? I'll just say you worked with her on some movie. And she'll say, yeah, oh, yeah, sure. They don't want to offend you, so they agree to anything you say. I don't. When people say, don't I know you, I say, no, you don't. No, I don't know you Because half the all. time you wouldn't remember anyway. <laughs> no, that's not true. <clears throat> no, I know I know faces. I just don't know names. Names. That's the way I am, too. I know faces, but I don't know names. You know, my brain can't retain 4,000 names of the people I've interviewed. All right, if you're, you know, Betty Davis, and uh, of course I remember Betty. You know, Joan, Jane Russell, my buddy. But not, not too many people I know. Too many people. So real quick. 
Um, you guys, uh, thanks everybody for leaving the uh, reviews on Apple Podcasts. Uh, we're up to like but over we need more. over seven hundred, so we need some more. So if you uh, subscribe to Apple Podcasts, and please subscribe to us and leave us a good review. And um, or any review that you feel, we don't want to coax you into a good review. Well, I'd prefer it to be a good no, one. If you think we stink <laughs> and we're horrible, we should we should be taken off the air. Do so. This way I could send you back a very nasty comment. <laughs> you don't get the comment back, unfortunately. Oh, I will. <laughs> you don't get to. I'll find a way. That's hilarious. Also, you guys, you can hear us every week uh, on our home station, W4CY Radio. We're on from 12 to 2 p.m. Pacific time and 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern time. Um, you can also hear us on iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, Amazon Music, uh, YouTube, Google Podcasts, Radio Public, TuneIn, Pandora, Amazon Prime, and SoundCloud. And then we're on about another hundred and I don't know, 50 platforms, but I picked out the most important ones. And if you know how to work a Ouija board, you can contact us through your Ouija board. But anyway, we were on a very cute show last week. We were, we were being interviewed, which is an impossibility. People that try to interview me pull the hair out of their heads because, you know, you can't interview me. I don't do interviews. I do conversation. Jimmy, what was the name of this show? It was so sweet. Um, Two for the show. What was two it called? For the road. Two for the road. Two I think. They're coming on next week. Two for the road, and they're coming on next week. This lady is 92 years old, an ex movie star who knew Jane Russell, but all my friends that I, I hung out with, my gang, Esther Williams, all of those people. And it was such fun to talk to somebody that knew what I was talking about. And her co host was one of the modern airs. If you remember the Perry Como show, he always had the modern airs on. So for me, it was going back in time, memorabilia. I would suggest that you watch next week's show if you're into, uh, how can, I don't want to say old stuff because we're not. If you're into nostalgia, we have everything though because we have them coming on and then we have rock goddess Susie Quattro coming on. And then the following week, we have uh, Donna Mills. Donna Mills who was on um, Knox Landing. So we have a lot of good stuff coming up, folks, uh, for your entertainment. Absolutely. So I, th uh, uh, I thought what I would do real quick, uh, so everybody can get an idea of who Nina Bergman is, we'd play one of her uh, songs. Um, the name of the song, let's do, is uh, going to be In My Blood. And uh, it's by Nina Bergman. So let's go ahead and play it while she's logging on now. now let me tell you something. She's far prettier in person than on screen. She's beautiful in person. Screen, she's pretty, but in person, wow. You know, some like people are better looking. Some The camera can't get some people's looks, like moi. Oh, yeah. So this is it, you guys. Uh, in My Blood by Nina Bergman, and then she'll be here, and we're going to bring her on. What happened? Well, hi. Hi. Can you see me? Yeah. Hi. How are you? Hi. Um, we can definitely see you. I don't know what happened with the video. I wonder oh. if YouTube. Uh, oh, the video was only 57 seconds long. I didn't realize I didn't send her a whole video. <laughs> no, because you know what? If we, 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 could a short one. we could play your music and they cut us off because they don't want us to copyright you or something. What is it, Jimmy? Yeah, we always get, sh we we get, get shut down a lot of times. Uh, yeah. YouTube yeah, 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 shuts yeah. us down. But Even if you sit there and say, Ron and Jimmy, I give you my permission to play my song, we're not allowed to. Isn't that stupid? So stupid. Look at Hub Reynolds. Well, said, oh, my God, she's hot and sings great. Uh, well, you know what? <laughs> Hub, Hub Reynolds is our Thank cowboy. You. He's our gorgeous, handsome, hung, built cowboy. 
looking for so hold a beautiful on. Let's do girl. A real, let's do a real uh, well, Maybe I could get a little fix up. Here. All right. So hold on, everybody. Now we want to welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, the incredibly talented and gorgeous rock star, actress, model, an amateur boxer, I found out earlier today by reading all about mm -hmm. her on the internet. Nina Bergman, hello and welcome to the show. Hi, you guys. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, we're happy to have you oh, here, yeah. too. You know I, what? Do I, me a favor. Can you pull, push your camera back up a little teeny bit so we don't cut the top of your head off? There we go. Yes. Great. Just so we Is don't lose. Better? Yes. Because we don't want to okay. lose the top Good. of your gorgeous wow. head. Terrific. Um, I was saying before we came on. You're so beautiful in person oh. and you're beautiful on camera, but there's something missing on camera that you see in person. Oh, no, seriously, seriously. I think you have to work on that. If we could get that glow, there's no, there's just a, uh, I don't know what it is, an energy, a glow. It's like the, Carmen Electra. Carmen Electra, like you, is beautiful on camera, but in real life, she's way more beautiful. Carmen is, <laughs> yes, Carmen is no, Carmen Electra is her eyes. If you see Carmen Electra's eyes in person, mm -hmm. you've never seen eyes in your life, not even a Siamese cat. Uh -huh. And the first thing I was impressed with you was how radiant you are. You are you have a radiant, if there's such a word as radiant beauty. Absolutely. And I'm not bullshitting you because I don't blow smoke up anyone's ass. You know that. I hate that. People that do those phony compliments. Like they say, oh, Ron, you look wonderful. You look 40. Yeah, 40 and 40 is 80. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Oh, my God. So, first of all, so you already know, Ron, oh, me, my cool, outrageous, my cool have... outrageous man at Bell Town co-host. I hope we're going to work together. We discussed it, of which yes. we, we cannot now. But as it stands right now, we may be working together. Who knows? I'm dying for it because I would love to work with you in the part that we would, would have for you. I, you're really a, a terrific, you know, I've researched you. I've seen your stuff. You're very versatile. I mean, you can go from beating people up to like being a <laughs> sweetheart. That's one thing I want to talk about, too. But first of all, we have a chat room that's filling up. Everybody's talking about how great you, how beautiful you are. And one beautiful. of the girls said she just watched Hell Hath No Fury because you were coming on the show. Yes. And, uh, so say hi to everybody in the chat room. Hi, you guys. Uh, we have literally countries, all different kind you know, of countries in per, represented. In, in person, she's as beautiful as Grace Kelly. I oh, mean, if, if, oh no! If you if you were made up, if you had a wig on, uh, you know, long blonde hair like Grace did, and and you were made up, you could probably look very much like Grace Kelly. I like well, when that. we're done, now I'll, I'll share some pictures. I did play her a long time ago. See, I'm not stupid. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. Well, Pretty all of you. Catch, but but hair and makeup did a really good job. So yeah, I, I went because on... you have the bones. You, you, you and, and I got to say something, folks. You know, I thought she could have been a bitchy snob. We don't know until we talk to people. Sometimes, you know, like I was talking to an I won't mention her name, but a very nice actress who was a creep. I wouldn't <laughs> I wouldn't work with her if she begged me, you know, and, and she was not nice. Some actresses or actors think who they are. And if you're not like a major celebrity star or a great producer who could put them in a major film, they blow you off. This gal was just as adorable as I love her. She was fabulous. I'm, I'm a fan. What can I tell you? So I'm hold on. So I yeah, Googled yeah. Oh, Look at that. Look at that. There's Grace Kelly. There you yeah. are, Grace. Oh, my there, gosh. I, see, I'm, I know so what I'm talking cool. about, folks. I'm nobody's fool. Yeah, there you go. So, so I want to talk about some things, but first of all, so you're born in Denmark. Where do you yeah. actually live? Do you live in Los Angeles or New York, or where do you live? I live in Los Angeles. I do spend a lot of time in New York. I went to school in New York, and I, you know, you went to school all over the place. Like you went to school all over. You were in school in Europe. You went to uh, the Tisch Moscow. School at NYC. Yeah, you you've been like all over the place. You went to yeah. NYU, right? I went to NYU. I went to Erdang Academy in London. I went to the Bolshoi Theater in Moscow. Yeah, I've been, you know, I I, I'm, I love studying. You don't look a day over 25, too. So, like, how the fuck you did all that? I have no idea. <laughs> I left when I was 14. I got a scholarship when I was 14, and then Good I left. For you. Um, I love it. And I also read someplace that your grandfather was, like, one of the greatest actress, Russian actors in history. Yeah, he was. I mean, he was. He he was. You know, in some of the most iconic iconic movies, Ivan the Terrible, and he did the Cherry Orchard. You know, the original member of the Cherry Orchard. Uh, you know, he was uh, one of Chekhov's students. Right. And, so you and, come from good stock. Well, you know, <laughs> it, it shows in your work. 
And the part that we have in this movie that I'm dying for you to play, as I explained to you, the only thing I think is you're going to have to really learn a New York accent. Yes. And it has to be authentic or I have a breakdown. So I would be happy to be your voice coach. Just listen to me and you'll hear broken English and terrible grammar. <laughs> and you'll be able to speak like a New Yorker. You know, just don't think in intelligently. <laughs> I could do, I could do that. I mean, I you know I do it all the time. Being a singer, I'm really good with the accent thing, and I speak you five know, languages. I so. mean, like you got wait. What languages do you speak? A hundred. You could, five. She said five. Yeah. What I languages do you speak? I just speak Danish, you know, and Russian and English, obviously, and then I speak Swedish and Norwegian. I love and it. Then, Once you know the the Nordic language, Ron's yeah, favorite yeah. daughter's favorite place to go is Sweden. She like loves Sweden. My daughter like, Deirdre loves just, Sweden. She just loves it there. So. We yeah. always have to buy her Sweden looking thing, things like that look like they were from Sweden for presents for Christmas and stuff. Because she I think loves it's Sweden. a thing now. Most of the people her age all have this thing about Sweden. I hear it from so many people her age, 48, 47. How old is my daughter? 40. She just had now a 45. Birthday. Oh, my daughter's 45. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, anyway. I, I, people say to me, how old are you, Ron? I say 50. They say, oh, that's good. How old is your daughter, Leslie? I say 54. <laughs> So you guys can follow Nina. She's at Nina Bergman on Twitter and Instagram. It's N-I-N-A-B-E-R-G-M-A-N. -E um, I want to talk a little bit about the music thing. And the reason I picked the songs, the two songs I picked is because I don't think you were like with on Warner Brothers or something, right? Yeah. So it was, um, I, I had a band and I started on my own and then I got signed uh, to Warner Brothers. Paul Anka was my manager and found me. Uh, That's the so singer. Cool. My, my daughter, Leslie, was his um what was she a business manager she worked for platinum and uh -huh. paul anchor was her businessman and he was very rough with her he's a he's a very tough guy oh uh, and he he used to curse a lot f you and stuff like that so my <laughs> daughter what my no my daughter one day got a little upset with him and she said listen paul my father's from brooklyn i'm from new york and if you want to use fuck you a lot I can use it more than you can. And she really laced into him. Well, he was bus buddies with her after that. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Ank is tough. He's tough. Yeah, he's very. Oh, yeah. She also did say to him, uh, you're not in the mafia, so stop acting like a hood. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. He, you know, he was a part of the Rat Pack. You know, he came from that era, you know, so he right. still lives yeah, that way. Ron, like, loves all that stuff. So oh, you... I came from that era also. So you basically, though, because, you, you know, there aren't that many. There aren't, aren't that many accomplished, you know, singers who are also accomplished actors. And you know, a lot of times they become really, really famous in one. And then well, the other one she? takes off. What's her preference, singing or acting? She what does what both. would you call yourself? Uh, I am. I'm an artist. I'm an actor, you know, so, so you, I, I, I just need to express. Like Act, I, act, an, an actor who sings. An actor who sings. Yes. I noticed though that you've sing, you sing on a lot of big movies. Like you have songs and you perform and stuff in a I mean big movies like like I mean, whether people like it or not, like Sharknado Three, which one of my clients was in, you know, like Shark those Sharknado movies were huge hits and I love them. They're yeah. so cheesy, they're fabulous. Oh, you know, and, and and Repo the Genetic Opera, which to me is like one of the greatest like movies ever. <laughs> No, I was fascinated with Sharknado. I never thought they could pull it off. I mean, I sat there and watched it. I got such a kick out of it. I thought it was the silliest film and and really ballsy. You had to have balls to do that film and to write it. Yeah. But I yeah. loved it. I really loved oh, it. There we look. Oh, my god. There gosh. you are. <laughs> yeah, but, but sometimes, you know, I can combine it. I have a movie that just got released on Amazon called Seize the Night. And I play a goth singer from the 90s. And they used, you know, mostly my songs. I wrote the songs. And I play this um, singer. Um, it's her true story. So sometimes, you know, I can combine the two. Which is very cool. Now, do they pay you for using your songs extra? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're, so you're paid for your music as well as your acting. Yeah. Maybe I'll sing. <laughs> 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 because I don't get paid much when I work. There's Seize the Night, you guys, which actually it looks really fascinating. I want to I, watch, I want to see that. I yes. want. To, I have yeah. to see everything you do. I have to study you, if we're going to work together. No, it's just a beautiful story. It's really, really, really beautiful. And if you like the '90s, it's like an homage oh, to LA no. in the '90s. What, I like. Love is it. it on tonight? It's on Amazon Prime, so we can. Yeah, it's on oh, Amazon oh, Prime. Okay, mm -hmm. we'll put it. We'll watch it tonight. So also, then I also. Uh, uh, you know, I put your 
the photo that you were like coming on. I, I work with a production company in Georgia and we're working on a, I don't know, it's like a million dollar film. So I don't know. That's small, but it's not, not a lot of talk good. about it. I and, hate uh, this. But anyway, uh, like I put the thing up and, and, and automatically like uh, people from the production company saw the post and they were like, oh, my God, we should like work with this girl. I thought he knew you. That's why he was like sending me this thing. But I asked him and he said, no, he just saw it on my Instagram and he looked you up. Um, so I have a really great human trafficking like story thing I'm working on and I'm going to pitch you now that they all know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. I would love to work with and, you guys. And I'm in that film. Yes. Would I have any scenes with her? I don't know yet. We don't know if I have any <laughs> scenes with you. But getting back to Hub, Hub Reynolds is a country. <laughs> no, hey, Hub, here you go. <laughs> Hub Reynolds is a country West singer who's well, getting in Atlanta. Who's really shooting up as a star. So handsome, sexy. You know, yeah, I was trying to fix wait, you up. No, he's a re- no. Wait a minute. He's a real cowboy. If you like cowboys, butch and sexy. But what I like, I know Hub for many years now. I know Hub about 10 years. He is probably the most giving, sweetest Hmm. man. All he wants to do is please the woman he's with. He's Sounds really... terrible. Sounds <laughs> no, he's not a he's not a bad guy at all. So if you'd like, we can. You know, <laughs> oh, I, I did Listen not know this was a dating like a. <laughs> yeah, because he's look. He just said how gorgeous you oh, are. He's, he's, the, oh. he, he, he's fainting over you. He's going. Everybody in the chat room is fainting over you. So yeah. oh, so. Yeah. So I want to do some bragging real quick, you guys. So some of the cool things that you have seen, and we're going to actually, I have the trailer for Hell Hath No Fury, so we're going to play it in a second so everybody can see it. And um, But before we play that, I just want to talk a little bit about, because you're not the normal, like, hot girl. Like, you actually, you're like the action, you know, like you have the hot girl, and then you have, you don't have that many hot girls who are like the action star. Like, you're like the Jason Statham of, like, women. Wow, I, I I'll I'll take that. Um, like your like all I'll these movies, Jason that, Statement. <laughs> and, and all these movies that you do, like I mean, like you look like look at her, like she's like badass, and they cut her hair off in this one. Like, Honey, it's called acting. I know, but like, how many girls do you know that we know that could go and like uh, kick Betty, the shit out of Betty everybody? Betty Dave, Betty Davis went without makeup and looked ugly in film to make the part work. If you're a true actress, you don't have to always be beautiful. I know, but she really can no, she kick did, people's she, ass. She did, <laughs> no, she did Grace Kelly. So now we know she's outrageously beautiful. Then she cut her hair off and beats people up. No, they cut it off in the movie. To yeah. show you that she's an actress. They and cut she, it off in the movie. She can you're going to see it in the trailer. <laughs> Jimmy, why do you think I'm so impressed with her? So wait a sec, though, wait, but wait, you wait, work on, out wait, all the I time. Wait. Shut up for a minute. I wrote the movie that you're going to be in, I hope. All right? That's my baby. Yeah. Everyone in that film has been highly selected by me and casting. I don't want anyone in that film that's going to make that film less than great because it's my baby. Mm. And that's why I'm really, uh, what's the word, rooting for you. You know, they thought the name of the other one could bring you money. You know, it's all about money. Yeah. The bigger she knows. Your, the believe me, she your, knows. The, if I could get Angelina Jolie to play my wife in that movie, I would get $30, $40 million. <laughs> yeah. I know. But I want to go back, though, because you're an actual, like, because 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 unlike other women, you are an action star, number one. But you actually, so you must train for that. Like, I see videos of you, like, working out, and you have workout videos, and you, you it says online that you were an amateur boxer. Yeah. I mean, like, that's, like, real kicking ass people shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, uh, uh, it's true. I mean, I would, I'll do whatever the role requires, you know. I was just in Canada not too long ago and I had I put on like almost 20 pounds for that one. Didn't work out for three months, you know, because I play like a girl next door who, you know, kind of normal, who doesn't have the physical strength I have, you know. So it's like and for Hell Hath No Fury, I, I lost a lot of weight and I wanted to look like kind of a stray dog because that's how the, these women looked like in the concentration camps. They were shredded because they work, but you know, oh, yeah. malnourished. So I'll, I'll do whatever the part requires. And if I need to play an action star, I'll put on the pounds and muscles, you know, and train like crazy. You know, I'm, I'm a chameleon, whatever the part requires, I will do. You're a yeah. good actress. You really know how to cool. do it. You could be like Mad Max. Like you could have had like Charlize Theron's part in Mad Max. Is Charlize Theron? I mean, that's, Mad Max? You know, that's the goal. You know, that's the, the, the dream. Oh, I think that I think that you're like perfect. So, you guys, I'm going to do a little bragging. Some of the cool shit that she's done. First of all, she's been on wait, every. Wait, wait, don't use the word. 
shit when it's her work. Okay, some of the cool things <laughs> that she has done. First of all, she's been on. She's been the uh, trophy girl on the Grammy Awards like four yeah. times. You guys, I think, which is super cool. She's yeah. been on every late night talk show, late night with James Corden, uh, late night with Jay Leno, uh, 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 early she, afternoon with Ron late Russell. night with Craig Ferguson. <laughs> Uh, what did you do for Soap Talk? So you were on 123 episodes. Were you the host? Um, I would host. They would have me do all like the guest appearances and host and come out and talk about their fashion segments. Or, um, you know, I did the same with uh, Craig Ferguson. I would do all their skits. I you know, so that. play all the different kind of characters and improv with those guys. So I just did when I first came here, I would just kind of take whatever I could, you know. Yes. Um, so I, I did a lot of those. Um, I know, I but most people take whatever they can. It's not like going on TV with Jay Leno or Craig Ferguson. It's like some fifty thousand dollar horror movie that's in the two dollar bin at Walmart. You know, like <laughs> like your 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 choices of like what was offered to you were significantly that better. I won't even do. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, know I called them two dollar movies. I don't do two dollar movies. No. I, I, all my life, I worked well with major people. I worked with Sophia Loren and Tab Hunter. What am I going to do now? Go in a $50 movie with yeah. Joe Blow from Kokomo? Get out of here. You someone, and when I posted that I was uh, seeing you guys today, I was on the show, um, a fan posted that you were in the car movie, the original movie. I did oh, a yeah, movie. when I was a kid, I was an extra. Yeah, that's what he said. He's like, make sure to mention that. I, I did the remake in Bulgaria with Universal. Um, oh, that's uh, funny. See, I'm, all, I'm like old enough to be your father's or your grandfather. So, <laughs> But uh, I'm an extra in a ton of movies, and, and uh, I suck at acting, so I never actually try to act. Ron can't stand it, so uh, no, 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 I'm a no, great no, no, producer. No, no, no. Let, me, let me tell you something. I have read lines with major people you know actors yeah. and actresses and it's easy to read lines with people i read lines with jimmy and we were up on a balcony i wanted to throw myself off the balcony in 10 minutes i wanted to beat him to a pulp and pull his eyes out of his head i kept saying jimmy do not read the line act the line okay okay i will and then he said to me, go over oh, it's there. It's not that bad. I'm not I said, that Jimmy, bad. don't do that. See? And then he said to me, go over there. Put some expression into it. Okay, Ron, I got it. And then he it's said to me, bad. go over there. It's not that bad. People like to put me in movies because I have a million followers on social oh, media. Oh, my, he is so bad as uh, an actor. But I'm I mean, really not really that bad. But bad. I'm a very good producer. Wonderful. Uh, no, he's a great PR person and a producer and a wonderful husband. And I love him to death. But, but I told actor. him, don't act. <laughs> wow. Just don't try. So I don't do the acting thing at, at the moment. Once in a while, I do little cameos with like one line. Uh, and, and they're the same line. Oh, don't go no, over not. there. <laughs> they are not. <laughs> go easy. All right. I can't go easy because uh, I want to tell you. Wait, Jimmy's you want? Let, let's do this. Now we're going to do the proof is in the pudding. No, I'm not doing it. On no, the, repeat yeah. after me now. Please don't shoot me. I want to live. No, I'm not going to do that. No, do it. Please don't shoot me. I want to live. <laughs> I don't know. That wasn't that bad. <laughs> okay. You know, with no context, you know. Yeah, there's no context. Yeah, right. you know. Um, anyway, I have a hundred and something credits, you know, but I'm an extra in lots of stuff. But I do have spe and uh, lots of indie films, especially when I lived in Florida. Like, I've got tons of speaking lines. And, uh, I love when you act. <laughs> doesn't matter. Hey, it gets me hired. So uh, I actually today I'm I, I did the costume design for Too Fast, Too Furious. And yes. They're, they're doing a documentary on Too Fast uh, on did. the Fast and Furious series. And uh, I just got an email today. They want to shoot. They're doing a whole documentary series about the Fast and Furious movies and they want me to be a part of it. Right. And, and, and he dressed Elton, Elton John. He dressed Madonna. He dressed. Uh, like cool shit. What's the other one? The, the, the girls want a horror have movie. Oh, Cindy Lauper. Cindy Lauper. Ooh, oh, yeah. He's, wow. He designed he designed all rock and roll people's clothes for famous rockers. And that's what he did before he became what he is now, a bad actor. Yeah, no, but, no. <laughs> I like love it. And I like horror movies. So I've dressed all the major horror movie people. But I want to go My back to her. My husband is wonderful. Just don't come on the set. <laughs> Um, I want to go back. So first, let's talk about. So you have this movie, uh, Hell Hath No Fury. Yeah. I know it's out because Don saw it. We're going to play the trailer in a minute. Um, and, uh, and it's coming out on the 16th in England and then all over Europe, Australia, everywhere. Yes, yeah, they, they just released an article uh, at The Guardian today, like an amazing review. So, so it's got 
Uh, so what? you play a French resistance fighter. It's got Timothy Murphy, who's coming on the show, actually. Like, I've been talking to him a couple Yay! of weeks ago. Louis Mandalore, Daniel Bernhardt. I know there's other people, but I just picked out the main people. Um, the name of the movie is called Hell Hath No Fury. Tell us just a little teeny bit about it, and then we're going to play the trailer and let everybody watch it. And you get your hair sh shaved off in the movie. Yes, I do. They paid you a lot for that. They had to pay extra for that. A lot. Not, <laughs> not extra. A lot. But, you know, oh. it's what the part required. So, you know, you can't play a, a French resistant fighter who... No, I know that, but to cut a woman's I mean, hair off, that they had to pay you Fortunately, abundant. though, you keep your hair short a lot of the times anyway, so it's like... I, I works. tried to let it grow, but, you know, I'm doing <laughs> another one next week. I'm starting one next week with Patrick Kilpatrick. And oh, he's then, been on our show. He's yeah. got, and you've done another yeah. movie with him. You did Assassin X with him. Yes, I did. And then he wrote this part for me. Um, and finally, they got it financed. And his it's his directorial debut. And I play the female lead in it. Do, yeah. Did people tell you that you look like um, the Birds of Prey chick? I forgot her name now. Isn't that terrible? I know she's like the biggest star, makes $20 million. Margot Robbie. Do people tell you you look like Margot um, Robbie? But when my hair was longer, yeah. You look um, just listen, like her. I want to ask you, where can I see that Grace Kelly film you did? Um, but it never got, we never, it never got released. You know, sometimes you work on things and never I get know. Why wasn't it released? I think like a money thing. That's you know? always the case. Was it about her life or any, one specific? Uh, uh, no, I play like a, uh, like a cameo. She comes on kind of like as a cameo. Oh, okay. Yeah. I like yeah. love it. So wait, tell us a little bit about the movie real quick. And then Roxy, uh, cue up the uh, trailer for Hell Hath No Fury, please. Um, there, there it is. Um, it's about uh, Marie. It's based on a true story of two women. And uh, um, back then, a lot of the women would go, the resistant fighters would go and date Nazis to gather information. And in my case, um, von Bruckner, this guy killed my parents, and I uh, start dating him to gather information, and then we fall in love. I had an aunt in Italy. I had to kill my parents, and he's a Nazi. And I get caught, and I, you know, I end up in Ravensbrück, one of the worst concentration camps, and you know, a, a lot of things happen. A lot I want to watch things. this one too. It's funny because my aunt, Aunt Ferminia Antonasia, was an opera singer in Italy, in Genoa, and she was dating a German, I guess, whatever general or something, because she had to. Otherwise, they were going to close down the opera house in Genoa. So as she was dating him, he would drink a lot. He gave her information, which she gave to the Italian resistance. So it's really funny how life is imitating art. <laughs> or art imitating you know, your life. Your movie, your movie. <clears throat> your movie is my aunt's life story. So tell so 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 you introduce the trailers. Just say, "Hey, I'm Nina Bergman, and this is my new movie, or whatever." And then, then Roxy, you play it when she gets done. All right, all right, go. Uh, all right. Um, next up is my new trailer for Hell Hath No Fury, where I'm starring as Marie, the French resistance fighter, based on a true story. Go. You want to tell us where that gold is? Maybe we can all go home. I'm doing my best to remember. I promise. If I were you, I'd keep real still, Marie. Well, then the fighting is over. Freedom. Ne tire pas. Je suis résistante. Then we're going to tar and feather that girl. She begged us to help her. Promised the major buried treasure. We don't find that gold by sundown. This will not end lastly for you. No gold, Major. You're the one that told us there was gold here, Marie. Viva France! Damn! They here waiting for us? I don't know. She's a liar. Hitler's elite guard. Think there's a chance they just piss us by? Hell no, they're coming. We will let you live. You gotta help us kill these Nazis. You said you can shoot. The question is, can you really? If we ambush them just right, they die. Get it for the charge! We won't stand a chance. Fire! So 
Don't you see? She's using you. We want clever tricks to Marie. Maybe we put down these guns. We all get a little piece of that gold. We got a deal? No more deals. No more deals. No more deals, baby. <laughs> now, listen, where can we see this? In theaters or on TV? It, uh, Amazon, it's no longer in the theaters, but it's on uh, Amazon. It's on Hulu, iTunes, Vudu, you know, now, this is everywhere. We're and now on the 16th. No, we were going to watch the other movie that she's got out on Amazon tonight. Yeah. yeah. We'll have, tonight we'll have to watch them Amazon. both. Two nights, if you will. I like that. <laughs> yeah. And then this one is coming out in Europe on the 16th, starting in, in the the UK. It, but you it can see Hell, Hell Hath No Fury on Amazon, folks. So watch yes. it tonight, everybody, and then let us know next week what you thought of it. Actually, like uh, yeah. uh, uh, everybody's writing. Oh, people are also writing that they re you remind them a little bit of Jamie Presley. Do you know who Jamie Presley is? I've actually yes. met her several times. Yes, we have the same manager. And oh, uh, and, yeah, I hear I hear that a lot. But then when we when we met, not so much. <laughs> oh, I think yeah. Margot Ro Robbie more. I think you look more like Margot. I think Robbie. she looks like herself. Cut the crap. I, and I hear Sharon Stone. Which I'll take. Yes, you could play Sharon Stone also. You have that Nordic face, which is wonderful. It's very easy. You know, it's an easy... My ex-wife was Dutch. Her name was Hendrika. And she yeah. had green eyes. And she had a face that if you put makeup on, you could make her look like Verna Lisi, which mm -hmm. she did at times. And she also looked with certain makeup like um, the the uh, Swedish actress. Oh, my God. I can't get... Anyway, another one that was famous of the, the 1970s. So I, I want to do a little brand, brand. So here's some other cool movies you guys can see. Uh, you can see Nina in. Uh, she did a movie called Black Limousine with David Arquette, Bijou Phillips, Vivica Fox, Lynn Shea, who's been on our show, and Patrick Fabian, who's been on our show. Um, the Way Shower with Eric Roberts, who's been on our show, Peter Stormare, Sally Kirkland, who Ron's friends with. I love Sally. Uh, I love Sally. Assassin X with Patrick Kilpatrick, uh, uh, Olivier Gruner, Martin Cove, Richard Grieco's been on our show, I Marshall Hilton's Richard. been I on our show, you know, Patrick's I, been on our show. You know how I met Richard Grieco? <laughs> we were peeing next to each other in a nightclub. <laughs> of course you were. And while we were peeing, I said, you want to come on my TV show? <laughs> <laughs> and we became friends. <laughs> oh, I love Richard. He's fabulous. I always, when I introduce him, I tell that story. Richard Grieco is probably one of our best actors around. We love him. He's fun. So I have a question. You did a movie called The Beautiful Ones with Eric Roberts, who we know pretty well, and Ed Lauder. And Ed Lauder, as a kid, do you remember who Ed Lauder is? Did you know who that is? He was in The Beautiful Ones. He's like the older yes. guy. Yes. Um, when I was growing up, he was like the, the actor that scared everybody, like – like in from my generation, like he was yeah. in every movie that he was in, he was like the mean, like mean football coach, mean whoever he was. Like, mm -hmm. was Ed Lauder nice? And did you get to do any scenes with him? No, I didn't get. No, I didn't get to work with him. Oh, that's too bad. I always yeah. wanted to know. Like, he used to. I used to have nightmares about him when I was like a little kid because he was so mean to everybody well, well, in all know, the movies. You know, the, the the people that play the mean guys are always the nicest. I know they're always the nicest. Well, always I, the nicest. I always <laughs> me. I always played the hood killer mafia mean guy I yeah mean, he's so nice really but it's called acting but i just finished a movie where i played a doctor and i th didn't think i would do well as a doctor and people that saw it said ron you really look like a doctor you did a good job and i thought to myself oh i guess i can act you know after oh. 74 years in the business and you're and in your and, and then when you did the remake of the car like when i had ronnie cox in it he's been on our show too yeah yeah he's, he, he he's, was a great yeah he he was fun yeah we had practically so then, everybody so and then when you did doom annihilation is that like this a sequel or something to like the original doom that had like the rock in it yeah it's a remake it's it a, remake. a remake oh mm -hmm. oh is that one any good should we watch that like i um, like the first one you know i you know Fans, if you're video, if you're a gamer, you know, these movies are right. fun. You know, you two are might be too sophisticated. <laughs> okay, because I, I actually <laughs> like them, so it won't be too sophisticated. Yeah, I mean, I have another, but he won't like it. <laughs> I have another one that's coming out later this year that I just did with a fabulous actor called David Leach, uh, who is in Downton Abbey. Oh, we love Downton uh, Abbey. Oh, yeah, Who's he playing Downton Abbey? David Leach. He huh? plays the driver, the chauffeur. Oh, I love it. Okay, yes. 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 Yeah, so good, it's me good, and good him starring in it. Uh, it's uh, they're changing the title right now. It's called Cold Meat right now with a French director, 
um, and we just shot it in Canada. And this is a, you know, a thriller horror. Uh, it's amazing. It was, it's like written like a play. Yeah, I, I think like you two it. are really going to like I, I, I like the people I, you're working with in it too. I would not mind seeing you in a horror movie as long as they don't buck shoot you in the face. <laughs> You know, uh, no, but you know, you know, it's, and it's, don't die in a movie. I don't like my friends to die in films. <laughs> no, I get very upset when I see that. She's usually the one kicking everybody. No, no, ass. she's you know, she's the you know, she plays like that. That's the one we had to put on the weight and play. You know, the girl yes. store had to do an American accent. She lives in you know Colorado and she works in a diner, and then something happens to her, and then she finds her inner strength. Oh, there we go. Okay, I like that. Oh, finding the inner getting strength. back to that, my good friend Lorene Landon. She has it in her contracts always when she makes a film, and she's made many. I do not die in a movie. And she refuses to die in a movie because she doesn't want to see herself on the screen dying, as a lot of actors will not go in coffins either. Would you go in a coffin, God forbid, in a movie? Yeah, I mean, I've died so many. I love dying. <laughs> no, but would you like, no, but if there, was a fu if there was a funeral scene, would you lay in a coffin like a stiff? Yeah. So I, I mean, never, I never would. I could never lay in a coffin. It's, I, uh, oh it's, I don't have any. Um, You're tough. Uh, You're brave. I mean, for me, the dying part is not a problem. For me, it's more like the nudity, you know, for just for the sake of it. I don't do that. I don't. Well, that's you what shouldn't. Yeah. Real, real actors shouldn't have to do nudity just. No, for I'd the get naked. I'd get naked in a minute. I just don't want to. <laughs> no, I just don't want to lay in a coffin. I, I never. Well, I'll lay in the coffin. I won't dig. <laughs> I won't get naked in a minute. I mean, if, no, it, you if, shouldn't. if it calls, if, if it calls for it, you know what I mean. If it's a part of, you know, if I play the female Terminator and I land and I'm right, like, you know well, what I mean, little, like right. that. It's a little different when a woman is naked than a man. When a man is naked, it's not really attractive. When a woman's naked, men's imaginations travel. But a man naked, it swings. It, it looks no, hanging, I, you know, I like I an elephant. It's I, not really attractive to see a man naked bouncing around. <laughs> I think you're right, though. Like, if it calls for it, but, like, like that's one thing I don't like about all the cheesy horror movies, which I love all the cheesy horror movies, but you don't have to have everybody without any clothes in every horror movie just to yeah. see boobs. Listen, nudity is no longer the shocker. The shocker is sitting on a toilet. Yeah, can you believe that? We see all these and movies saw, now, people and, pooping on a toilet and stuff. I can't believe it. Famous movie stars, famous, wiping themselves. I thought it was nauseating. Also, we just finished, or we're still watching, have staircase. Seen the staircase. I'm not going to say Max? what happens in staircase, but there's a scene that I really thought was totally not necessary, where uh, Farrell, Colin, Firth. Colin Firth is doing something to his wife for the back door <laughs> on film, and I just thought how he's like licking her butt in the fucking movie. How he's unnecessary! In it. Like, how, and you see it all. It's disgusting. How unnecessary is that? What in the hell has that got to do with the shot with the story? You know, Hollywood is getting a little bit too ridiculous. These young Crass. people that are doing it have these young people are weird. They're potheads. They're all wackos. I know I work with a lot of these young jerks sometimes on the production. They don't know their asses from their elbow, how they became cameramen or producers. I'll never know. As you know, years ago, the people that I worked with 50 years ago were you know, I mean, I, my director in my first movie was Sidney Lumet. How do you beat that? You know, these men were, knew what they were doing. They had style and class. If an actress's breast showed too much, they cut because they didn't want her to look indecent. And they kept all the actresses looking like superstars. You know, I once said somewhere in, a, in an interview that Marilyn Monroe does pee, and people were upset by that. They didn't want to know that Marilyn Monroe peed. <laughs> Because it took away from her goddess image. Yeah. And movie stars don't do any movie stars do not have sex. They don't go to the bathroom. They don't do any of those things that humans do. And that's what Hollywood sold back then. You know, is it good or bad? I don't know. Am I an old girl? You didn't need to see you didn't I don't need, need to see you. You didn't need to see that. Colin Firth rimming some lady like no like all, and with you, you all, all I uh, need to see is your beautiful face. I don't need to see uh, anything anything more than that. Your face is so satisfying. You don't have to. So, ugh. so here's what I want to ask you then. So, because you you're developing quite a resume, um, and you're definitely talented and gorgeous. So, bucket list, and and I like to ask all the actresses and actors this: uh, male and female actor who you would love to have an opportunity to work with that you have not worked with yet, 
And then if you could have ever been in any movie that's ever been made in history, what movie would you like to be in? Oh, uh, that's easy. So Daniel DeLewis. Uh, oh, that's a good one. Yeah, he's a great pick. Right and, uh, you know, um, my favorite movie is La Femme Nikita. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. La Femme Nikita, she's about, it's a, it's a fucking action chick French. movie. French. <laughs> but but it's more than action. You know, it was phenomenal, you know. It's, it's a Poisson. phenomenal. Yeah, it's it's a yes. phenomenal, Luke phenomenal. Did I ever see it, it? it turned into a it's a movie that turned into a TV series. Also, did I ever see it? I don't. I probably not. No. I, or or um, you know, I came to America after watching uh, Thelma and Louise when I was a little girl. Oh, that's a fun one. And then my first uh, paycheck, I bought a Thunderbird <laughs> because that was my thing. I just wanted a Thunderbird. I wanted to drive in the mountains, and I thought America represented freedom you know women power you know i mean it changed my life that movie actually too though your your career kind of shows that like the, the roles that you've chosen and now, now or that the, they've chosen that have, have chosen you <clears throat> wait, wait wait what a man what about a, a female yeah. actress that you would like to work with who that really inspires me um i'm thinking you know can they be dead yeah <laughs> they could be dead anybody. i mean any of the classic ones. I did a play where I played Melina Dietrich for six months, and I would have loved to work oh, wow. with her. I heard she was a bitch on wheels. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, really. She was an impossibility. I know a lot of people. My very dear friend, Mr. Blackwell, was very dear friends with Sidney uh, Guleroff, the hairstylist. And Sidney had to work on Melina's Malena's hair many, many films. And he had to take Valium and medicine before working with her because she got him so hysterical. She was insanely vain. And every hair, everything was meticulous. She would sit there for hours after her hair was done, looking in the mirror for perfection. And if she found a little thing she didn't like, she raised holy hell. It held up production on a lot of movies. Anyway, if you read her book, which her daughter, uh, Maria Riva, wrote. Oh, yeah. You'll find out with that Marlena Dietrich was one crazy broad, but a superstar. You know, that's how they were back then. Do you like yeah. the old movies? Do you like Ron loves Turner, Turner classic movies? I had never seen any of those movies. Well, because until all I my him. friends are in them. You know, I was best friends with Jane Russell. I know Esther Williams. I know all the movie stars of my era. I'm 82 years old. You know, I know everybody. And my stars were stars. My girls, when they went out, they looked beautiful. You could never photograph them unless they were made up and hair was done. They never behaved improperly in public, in private. They were all hoes and drug addicts and drinkers. <laughs> <laughs> but in but in but in public, they were virgins and lovely and you know you, you stars. And I wish they would treat actresses and actors like that again. Wait, wait. do you have favorite movies from like the classic movies? Or do you have certain movies that you picked Marlena Dietrich? So you must have some movies that you like. Yeah, she, pl she played Marlena. Oh, yeah. You yeah. Played her. Yeah. I played Marlena. I mean, a lot of hers um, I love. And then, uh, you know, I think from that time, you know, I like, you know, because I'm such an actor, you know, so I tend to lean towards like, you know, Streetcar Named Desire. Uh, wow. Yeah, my like, favorite. Or, <laughs> Like some of the more heavier ones, you know, I like drama. <laughs> yes. Tennessee Williams, period. Yeah. yeah. My, my, I love Tennessee, everything he's ever done. I like North by Northwest. And what's the one about the letters, the three wives? Or a, the letter, letter? a letter to three a letter wives. To three wives. Yeah. Those are my those are my favorite ones. And, and, yeah, and no, I love I love classic. I mean, that's what I study. Yes. You know, that's... anything. And yeah. Any even in the way you dress and everything, though, you look like a classic movie well, superstar. Uh, I was going to go there with this with her. We have a very dear friend, Sarah French, who's going to be in my movie. She plays. Um, who does Sarah play in the movie? I forgot your daughter or your. No, my daughter's not. Who does Sarah play? I, anyway, Sarah. Oh, Sarah plays my uh, my wife's sister in law. OK. Sarah is famous for horror movies and nudie movies, you know, like a little bit of nudity. And now Sarah is going to be playing a part of a very selfish, bitchy, greedy, cold person. Something she's never done. And she's excited about this because it's a, it's a, it's a different role. Yeah. Um, most actresses get typecasted. 
Yeah. You don't seem to be typecast. And I think you can go any which way and upside down, inside out, which is what an actress or actor should do. Um, I have no idea where I'm going with this because I forgot. <laughs> I forgot what I was going to. No, say. I, 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 I hear you. I, I totally help me, help me, help me, honey bun, help me. No, I, I hear you. I just did. Um. Uh, oh, wait, wait, I, I know where I'm going to go. Okay. You can be like a Betty Davis. Because you you cut your hair off and you took that makeup off and you became the part. You don't give a damn about looking Grace oh, no. Kelly all the time. You want that part to work. Yes. And that's a true actress. You are a Warner Brothers 1940 star. Wow. I'm serious. That's that's how I feel. I, I, I would write about that. When I do write about you, I'm going to write about that. You know, a lot of women do that. So I let her go then. She was going to say something. I'm sorry. Go. No, 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 no. I, I don't. I, I like. I want to hear what he has to say. <laughs> no, Jamie. Jamie Lee Curtis looks like shit, and she took everything off, and she did a yeah. brilliant job. In Halloween. In Halloween, there are just so many actresses that are so over that. Like, oh, my eyelashes are crooked. You know, they're not interested in that junk anymore. No, like me years, too. like years ago. I mean, Jane Russell, who was my dearest friend, we hung out. I mean, we were brother and sister. She hated when she was 19 years old. Howard Hughes brought her into the makeup department. Jane said she was there three hours. They said, let's give her Joan Crawford's eyebrows. Let's give her Hedy Lamar's lips. They painted Jane Russell so much for her, her um, audition tape film. She looked at herself in the mirror. She said, I look 40 years old. And I was 19. She went in the bathroom and she washed her face completely, put mascara on and pale lipstick and went out and shot her, uh, her audition film. And Howard Hughes loved it. He thought she was beautiful. And Jane was naturally beautiful. Jane Russell, as an 89-year-old woman, was yeah. a beautiful woman. You know, never aged. So hold on, I want to go back to music for a minute. Then get it all in. We only have, we have like four minutes left. Uh, so uh, as a musician, since you still do the musician, and and I really like your music. I always knew you were a musician, but for some reason, uh, I don't know. I, I didn't really like ever listen to anything. But I like I watched everything on YouTube this week since I knew you were coming on. We, so we were studying. Uh, you don't. I no, do. I don't. You don't. <laughs> No, but you, I did study because you, I like. Um, so, so if you, if, let's say you were going to go on tour as a solo artist or with your band, what kind of a band would you like to go on tour with? Look at that! Oh my God, she's so badass! Look at those abs! Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you know, I tend to um, perform music that um, you can play while you train as a boxer. I like the more energetic uh, music. You know, I went to musical theater school and I'm operatically trained, but somehow I just always end up in bands where I do the harder stuff, you know? Um, and, uh, you know, growing up as a kid, I was a very angry kid. So I, I discovered late in my life, Nine Inch Nails, which is an industrial band. Yeah, I was, I you know, I was an nails. angry girl, you know, when you were by yourself at 14 and, you know, I was raised with two moms and very, um, tumultuous childhood you know so uh i mean uh you know it's, it was hard in denmark at that time you know so um i I've, think it was, yeah i was angry so i kind of would do angry music i'm not that angry anymore <laughs> i of actually not, like because you, you're success. i have to ask you a question i hope you don't mind and i hope you answer it are people that watch want to know do you have a boyfriend girlfriend <laughs> <laughs> any friend, any kind of friend, are you in love? Are you looking for love? Because this is what they want to know. This is what they want to know. Um, I do. I do. You do I what? Do. I'm sorry. Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. You have someone, a person. Yes, I do. Okay, you're happy? I am very happy. You know, I, I kind of had given up on love. You know, I was No, of, never give up on love. You know, I did. I gave up. I was oh, like, Oh, no, never. Me. You know, I'm here for the animals. I'm here to rescue animals for the rest of my life and have a beautiful career. We have three rescue dogs. We have three. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. This is Astro. Astro's our little this baby. Is, Aww. Say hi, he just Astro. Made me so happy. And we have a 135 pound Brazilian Fila Mastiff that we rescued from the big dog rescue ranch in Florida. And then we have a um, 35 pound uh, English dog, she sheep dog poodle mix or what is no, it no she's sheep a dog terrier mix so we she's have three a bearded terrier yeah we have three rescue dogs one's seven pounds one's like 35 pounds and one's like 130 pounds <laughs> i have to tell you a quickie i was with somebody for 46 years 
I met him when I was 19. He was a love of my life. He died of pancreatic cancer. I didn't ever want to love again because I said, there's no way I could ever love anybody like I loved Sal. Sal and I were born together. We grew up together. He was my whole life. And I went out with a lot of jerks, and I thought this one's only one sec. Get out of here. I'm not interested. Like you, I was going to live on a farm and raise llama. But I then met Jimmy, and I found a kind, good, caring, loving, sincere, beautiful human. And I fell in love with Jimmy. So love is wonderful. It, got, it keeps coming. Don't you ever say you could live without love. I th but that's what I thought. I was just like, I oh, but now you're I'm in love. I'm glad, though, that it's but not But now that you're way. in love. Yeah, right? you know, I think it's when you don't look for it. I didn't want it. You know, I kept fighting it. I want to do one like, more. I, I want to do. You know, love, you're beautiful from within. Uh, you know that. The, the inside shows through your face. And if you're in love, nobody's as beautiful as when they're in love. You know that, of course. Look at this yeah, I am. I am. I am there. <laughs> I am so, so happy to hear. So that. you guys, other places besides that's so, so great too that that animals are a cause of yours, which I had yep. written that down, and I also wrote down you were in Narls Barkley's video, Gone Daddy Gone, Sick Puppies. I love Sick Puppies back in the day. Yes. Uh, all the same Trey songs, Foreigner, and and you're also uh, when you were in the Dos Equis commercial with the most interesting man in the world. Yeah, and I have. You want to hear something funny? Yeah. So I did that. I played the. Nordic goddess. And right now I have five commercials running for uh, Saks underwear. And it's like the same concept as the most interesting man in the world, except I'm the most interesting woman in the world. Mm. I wear the suits and all of the guys are in their underwear. And I play like <laughs> the Marlon and Dietrich kind of character. <laughs> I educate people about balls and how to take care of their balls. You know <laughs> Are they on YouTube? Can we find them on YouTube? Yeah, on YouTube uh, we, we, just, we just got banned uh, from the Super oh, Bowl. Oh, this commercial I've got to see. <laughs> this I've got to see. Oh, it's, I'm going to totally look for that. Suit and I talk about balls and all these I guys are running around I in their underwear. It. It's women, hilarious. Women, women are fascinated by men's balls, you know. I don't know why there's such a fascination. Maybe it's because they look like elephants from the back. <laughs> I don't know why, but it's very funny, it's very well written, and and the whole campaign is kind of like the sounds terrific. I I, I want to watch. That. I play him. Is, it on, is it on YouTube? Can we find it on yeah, YouTube? Yeah, just think? Google uh, "sex underwear Nina Bergman." Okay, Definitely. okay, we're gonna do that I, then. I put it, I think two of them on my Instagram, but there's five of them running because I'm getting so, residuals, so I know that they're. So running. you guys can follow Nina on Instagram and Twitter. It's at Nina Bergman, N I N A B E R G M A N. What's your website? Is it like NinaBergman.com Nina or Bergman. something? NinaBergman.com. Yeah. Very there you easy. go. So you guys can check it all out. Everybody check out Hell Hath No Fury. Also check out, what's the new, other new one that we would call about? The Seize the Night. Seize the Night. They're on mm -hmm. Amazon Prime. Go look for the Balls commercial for Saks Fifth <laughs> Avenue on YouTube. And they got banned for the Super Bowl. That means you know it's got to be great. And, uh, <laughs> it's good. It's really funny. You guys are going to uh, I'm going to love it. But anyway, I want to say something really quick. I met Ingrid Bergman for like, well, I really didn't meet her. I sort of walked by her years ago. And I'm so happy that you have a Bergman name because it's such a good name. Ingrid Bergman and now you Bergman. You know, it's good. It's a, it's a healthy name. Yeah. I, I mean, my grandparents are Swedish. So, yep. yeah. I like that. Yeah. So, good luck with everything. We're definitely going to be in touch and stay in touch. We want to thank you for coming on the show. You've been a fabulous guest and we wish you and all I hope the best to see with you everything you're doing. socially one day. Oh, absolutely. We have to chat. We'll go to lunch or something when we're yeah, in Yeah, I would love that. We have a lot of stuff to talk about. Absolutely. Anyway, you're delicious. You're delightful. And you made me delirious. And thank you for coming on our show and being open, honest, and fun and terrific. And yes, I do hope I work with you in two movies. Be an mm. honor, be an honor of mine to work with such a gifted actress. Me too. I work with a lot of crap sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So does she. She understands that too. Yeah. So Nina, thank you so much. Best of luck, and we'll talk soon. If you need anything, let me know. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Love it. Love it. Love, I love it. Her. Wasn't She's that fabulous? Guys? Everybody, isn't she the sweetest thing? So we're going to play a real quick music video and bring on our next guest. Uh, this is Follow Me by Nina Bergman. I don't know if this is a short video or a long video because I never looked at that to see. Uh, but we will bring her back. Everybody in the chat room loved it. Uh, we're going to come back with Stacy and Gil. But check out Follow Me by Nina Bergman.
Yay, everybody, that was Nina Bergman. Follow me. And now we're going to bring on our next guest. Yay. Hey, hey, Stacy and Gil, how are you? Hey, I love you guys. I'm so excited to be back on the show. Yes, we're excited to have you. Gil, say something. Let's make sure we can hear you. You got it. I'm doing fantastic. How are you guys? And thank you for having me on the show. I know we're terrific. And Gil, you have to tell me, how do I correctly uh, pronounce your last name? Laredo? Laredo. But Laredo. Oh, everybody oh. says it the wrong way. I'm very personable I that mean, way. You know? I can't believe he did. You didn't know how to say Laredo. Yeah, but look at how it's spelled. L-A-U-R-E-I-R-O. That's not doesn't look Laredo. like Laredo. Yeah, well, I'm Italian, so I could speak it. Laredo. So it's Laredo. Yes. Laredo. Laredo. Yes. Okay. No, no, not, not like Larry. Laredo. It's Mexican or Spanish or South American. Wait, say it one it's more time, something. Gil. Laredo. Is La Laredo. Yeah, yes. you're, you're, right, you're anyway. Mexican or you're what are you? No, I am half Spaniard, Cuban. half Sicilian. Oh, you're Sicilian. I'm actually from Uruguay, South America. Okay, so you ran away from the Nazis. <laughs> yes. Oh, the Nazis ran down to me. Yes. <laughs> because well, everybody, name, it's like I ran away from Santa Claus. Like, yeah. <laughs> All the Italians that went to South America ran from uh, the, the from Mussolini. Oh, they're talking about how great you guys like look right, in the now, chat room. Ready? Hold yeah, on, let, wait. I want to do an introduce intro. Introduce us. I want to get. All right, to, everybody. To now we want to welcome stuff. to the Jimmy Star right. Show with Ron Russell. We're welcoming back the fabulously talented and gorgeous Stacy Toy and Gil Laredo. Lorejo, <laughs> Lorejo, Lorejo, Gil Lorejo, and we want to welcome you guys. Um, we're going to talk about your lives and NFT drop. And before we get started, let me introduce you to my cool, outrageous man about town co-host, Mr. Ron Russell. Yeah. All right. <laughs> hey, now, listen. So and we have a chat room wait. full of people. Say hi to everybody in the chat room. Hey, you guys hey, are guys. awesome. I love there's it. Can you come to my house and tell me that stuff all the time? Because I, I know. <laughs> listen, the last time you were on our show. Mm hmm. You wanted to meet this guy. I tell us that's the love story. I love it. Yes. Ooh. So you guys asked me a question because Dave from the UK wanted to jerk off to me. So you asked me. To <laughs> yeah, he's in there now, too. <laughs> so much. I'm here because of you, man. So um, I answered. I'm a big supporter, Dave. <laughs> big supporter. <laughs> But I, you asked me the question if I was dating, and I said, you know, I, I'm, I, uh, asked I, I, I asked we're you that talking way. and. He heard that and he's like, oh, so we're talking. And then he put on all the moves and officially asked me out because of your show. So see that he's good. He looking. helped close the deal, guys. Thank you. You're my yeah, way he, way to go, Dave. You, you make a beautiful couple because she's beautiful and you're handsome. He says happy to help laughing, laughing my fucking ass off. He says right. <laughs> that's, great. that's so awesome. I didn't even have to show my boobs and I still won. I know. <laughs> <laughs> the power of influence, guys. There you go. I love it. So, so, um, so, so wait a minute. So now you're dating seriously, or, or what is it? Do you think there's marriage up the road? Hey, you over there, guy. You, you okay, think well, you're gonna well, propose? You think you're gonna propose to her? Well, I, I think it's down on the road. There's definitely that toll booth there. You know what I mean? But I'm definitely on the no right bullshit. lane. Look, I am I'm, definitely I'm, in the right lane. Let me tell you that, Ron. You know, I I'm just had to keep listen, it on cruise, cruise listen, control, and I'll be okay. No, no. I'm Italian. All of, I'm a cento per cento Italiano. I'm a hundred percent Italian. Mm -hmm. And if she were my daughter, I would say to you, if you don't engage my daughter in six months, I'll break your fucking legs on a curb. <laughs> you will never see tomorrow. I call my friends. They come. They smack you around. They teach you some manners. <laughs> You know, and if you don't marry my daughter, God forbid you knock her up, you're dead. But if you, you know, you put a ring I, on my daughter. My first husband's dead, remember that. So, like, my track. <laughs> 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 Google me, I come up in an obituary. I mean, there's no lying, okay? <laughs> oh, my God, that was fun. You guys make such a cute couple, though. I've never They're seen adorable. you together like look that. You really well, do. You really guys, let me tell you this. If that passed that information then scare me. No. Our families can meet any day, trust me. <laughs> yep. I mean, yeah. I met him because he was friends with my father. So when I was in high school, we would sell like hamburgers and hot dogs at the fair to raise yes. money for kids' organizations and things like that. So, you know, I remember my mom saying, oh, he's so good looking. And I'm like, yeah, he is. <laughs> Never knowing, here we are today. So I have, I have, I think I have to tell you too, Gil, you have the most beautiful smile. I like Thank you. Like, are, those just teeth, beautiful. are those teeth yours? Well, you know, I paid a lot for it, but uh, <laughs> never mind. I got the title. 
you know, he's got a good, he's good looking and he's got a sense of humor. Now, if he's hung, he's perfect. Well, you know. that's why I'm here, boys. Why to buy the NFT for here. that one, you know? <laughs> I don't want to kill him, so it's got to be doing something right, yeah? You, I like love you, it. You have a lot in common with Eileen Shapiro. <laughs> I know. I love that lady. Eileen, no, we should uh, say hi to Eileen. I don't think she's here, but that way she'll hear her. When she right, right. When, when she reruns. You know, Eileen is a size queen. I hate to say it, but it's sad. But Eileen checks men out. She really can tell by looking at a man in his trousers what he's got. And we have fun with her because then we ask the guy later getting around and she's nine out of 10 times right. I don't know if she has x-ray vision or she has, I don't know what, but she really can. Well, Jesus definitely exists because after, after what I saw, like the miracles well, have been happening everywhere. Well, <laughs> if, if he's Sicilian, he's got it. I mean, you know, Italians are not shortchanged by any means. So hold on. So you guys, you guys uh, can follow Stacy on Twitter and Instagram. She's easy because it's at Stacy Toy, but Stacy is an E in it, so it's S T A C E Y Toy, and that's Instagram and Twitter. You can follow Gil on Instagram under Gil underscore, and then his last name L A U R E I R O. Um, and then they've also Loreo. got their company that they work with together. It's called NFT Drop LLC. Uh, NFT Drop. And you can follow their Instagram that they just started. It's uh, at NFT Drop LLC. And, uh, and, and we're going to talk about a couple other things and then go back to NFT Drop just so people kind of know a little bit who you guys are besides the fact that you're dating and, and that, that Ron was instrumental in getting, yes, getting you together. And I have to say one more thing over there, Gil. Yes. Just because her last name is Toy. She's not going to be your toy. Ron, she is my toy. No, no, no. I'm calling I'm calling Brooklyn right after this. She the is show. my toy, you know. And No, 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 no. She's nobody's toy. She's marrying goods. <laughs> no, she's no toy. You don't toy with her. She's no toy. If you don't, I you don't, don't fucking play like that. Ron, she's, <laughs> she's my sexy toy. Uh -huh. Yes. Oh, no, 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 no. She's going to Sexy toy that will one day be a wife. Okay. <laughs> he is in layaway, yes. Yes. There you <laughs> go. Off the shelves, guys. You know. You right, got your Rolex, so, you know, again, I'm doing good. So. <laughs> well, listen, now, what the fuck is your company about? I haven't a clue. Jimmy said it's like Bit Toys or what is it called? Bit uh, I told her it's the next evolution after Bitcoin because he because well, he know. had to say Bitcoin in the movie and and they I had play, to shoot it like fifteen times because yeah. he couldn't say Bitcoin. No, no, you know what? <laughs> I played I played General Milan in a movie and I'm talking and the guy is telling me about a Bitcoin. I had no idea what they were and had never heard of it. So I I blew the line. Then I said to the guy, "What the fuck is a Bitcoin? Coin, whatever." <laughs> And they explained it. And I still have trouble with that word. Don't ask me why, but I cannot get that word ever right. Now, your business is one up or down or better than or like. the next of all evolution. No, I want it in easy terms. Don't give me <laughs> fancy schmancy. No fancy talking. I want you to do it as simplistic as you can because we have a lot of old bags out there like me that are half shot. So you have to, you know. Half shot. With have... elephant balls, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. yeah, she listened to that earlier. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. I actually said, damn, Ron. Yeah, that's a pretty good impression of an elephant. Yeah. <laughs> so tell everybody, what does NFT Easy. drop? What is NFT? First of all, tell them what NFT stands for. I know yeah. what it stands for. But for people who don't know, tell them what NFT stands for. Well, that. NFT stands for stands for uh, non fungible token. Um, nobody All right, hold it. Stop. What stop. That means either. Stop. <laughs> stop. What is a non refundable? No, no, non fungible token. token. What the fuck is fungible? <laughs> Yes, so it's unique. You hablo español here at this point in time. That's why they put it all together and they just say NFT. <laughs> right. But what it is is, is, is uh, unique. So it represents that every one of those tokens is unique from the other. They're none alike and they're none the same. But it's not so much the same as look. It's more the same as value. So mm -hmm. it's based on, on monetary value. A Bitcoin, uh, one Bitcoin is equally the same value as the other Bitcoin, but one NFT is not the same value of another NFT. I have no idea what you're talking. I do. About. I do. So hang on. So me, just listen. Everybody else will get it. Tell me again. So like, hold on. What, what you sell products? What What is it? That, what Give her an mean? example. Right. Give her an example. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. Ron, I got you. This is the easiest way to explain an NFT from my eyes. It's a coupon. 
like a Raleigh cigarette coupon years ago. It's a coupon. It's like your Sunday coupons. It's a coupon. That coupon you can use to sell your products, your ideas, your art, you know, your music, your your videos, um, your farts. Wait, wait. I anything. buy. Wait, I buy your farts. Wait, wait. <laughs> They made over two hundred grand selling their farts. No, I saw that. I saw that. I saw that. Wait, I listen, saw... I can buy a coupon from you. Yes. How much does a coupon cost? Depends. Well, different... it depends. Mm -hmm. Let's say the microphone you're speaking in. You can buy an NFT for that microphone for whatever the value of the microphone is, brand new. And the one of the values you get from buying that NFT is that you receive the actual brand new microphone. Okay. In the mail. That you use. So, so years, so years and years ago, there was a cigarette called Raleigh's cigarette. Yep. Yep. Raleigh's had a coupon on the back of the cigarette pack. Yes. If you saved up enough coupons, you could go to the Raleigh shopping center and get a toaster or an iron or something. Is right. that what you're doing? No. Not necessarily, but yes, it can be done. That's you see, that's the confusive part. Confusive uh, part here is that. There is no limits or rules of what you can do with an NFT. Yeah, and essentially, can I, can um, I buy a car through you? Yes. Anything. Yes. Anything that you can think of. Like, I love it because I've been studying all of this in this world for like five years now. Um, so, and I still don't know how everything works because everything's changing all the time. But having your hand in the next thing that's kind of rolling. I mean, even President Biden signed cryptocurrency for the country along with uh, over a hundred other countries to make the country currency on crypto. Uh, Fidelity started offering their 401ks to their um, people in crypto. Um, it, it's just starting to- You can pay people on PayPal in cryptocurrency. Yep, absolutely. What, what is crypto? Crypto is the currency. So like Bitcoin and the actual coins yes. that are money value. Now, so NFTs are tokens, not coins- and they're more of an asset. Right. So yes. event, eventually, it's an electronic currency. That's mm -hmm. all it is. Okay. So eventually money will no longer be used. Currency right. exactly. is known. Correctly. We're going to be using this stuff. Teresa Saban wrote in the chat room. Isn't, isn't this what Su Wong is doing? Su Wong is selling her house for 100, an NFT. $100 million. I think something like that. Right. She's, she's asking $100 million through your thing, your NFT. So, right. so. Teresa wrote digital art that's preserved on the blockchain forever, digital currency. Yes. Um, uh, kind but of. But it's more than that. Yes. It so can be art. It can be a product. It could be a physical thing. It could be, you know, a store. It could be a book. They said the people yeah, are selling their farts. Like, I'll give, you, I'll give you an example, guys. Let's say you want to, um, you're doing consulting services, right? So you're selling your time. So now what you do is you can do an NFT of an hour block of your time. Mm -hmm. So now whoever buys that NFT, they bought uh, an appointment with you for an hour. So now I didn't have to text you. I didn't have to go to your website. I didn't have to call you on the phone or anything like that. I just bought the NFT and you sold me an hour of your consulting to me through that NFT. You see, that's why I call it a coupon. You can make an NFT do whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. If you want it to be art, which is what the majority of the world out there really looks at or thinks about right now when you say an NFT, that's fine. But an NFT can sell a physical thing, a time mm -hmm. thing, an imaginary thing, ideas, you We're name it. We're raising money for people to film. Oh, right. okay, hold it. Stop, hold. Don't go any further. <laughs> I need I need a million five hundred to finance my movie. There how you go. We, how do I get it? You, we, you talk to us right after right. the show. Okay, right after the show. I want a million five hundred dollars. I'm telling you now. I want to, I need money to I got the cast, I got the story. It's a wonderful movie. I just need a million five to get going. So mm -hmm. you can get me a million five. Well, the key is to sell enough NFTs to create your million five. And we're now, wait, 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 hang on, hang on. Who sell you sell the NFTs for me, right? We create mm -hmm. it. We sell, you know, and what, the and what, what percentage, sell. what percentage of my one five do you get? Well, we're not we, telling you that over the air because, you know, we've, but, we, we get a very small slice of the pie. So yeah. out of my one million five hundred, say you get two hundred fifty thousand. Well, we'll probably try to sell two million. So you walk away with your million five hundred. Oh, so you walk. You're talking. That's a good racket you're in. Jimmy, get in this business. <laughs> it's not a how, racket. Does Jim, how does, how does, how does Jimmy yeah. get? You hooked me up with my man, so we'll be here to hook you. <laughs> yeah. No, but how, how does Jimmy get in this? I have no head for business. I'm an actor. 
All my life, I've been an actor. So hang on. I have never written a check. I don't pay bills. I have no idea how much money I earn or what I've got. Jimmy knows all of that. So I I have no idea. So you guys, they have a company. The company is called NFT Drop. I love it. It's a celebrity client-based company that collaborates and drops NFTs for purchase. If you guys remember, two or three weeks ago, we had Rusty Gilligan on. He's the comic book artist. And so on Friday, he works. That's that's how we met him. We met him through Stacey and Gil to come on the show. And they he dropped an NFT on Friday, which was digital magazine covers that he created. Right. Tell, mm-hmm. tell us what it is. Real yes, quick. That's it. it is antique uh, magazine coverage like uh, Buffalo Bill, 1907. Zorro. Um, Zorro. Yeah. Okay. The golden Those era. Are nice. Those are girls nice. that are like, you know, kind of naked, but still tastefully covered. Um, there's mystery. There's right. Uh, every every kind of genre you can imagine: sci-fi, horror, thriller, you know, romance, all that yep. jazz. Um, and we're selling them as um, you can get a physical copy of the magazine cover to frame and then put in your home, and then you also get the digital copy of that where you can put it in your metaverse or keep it in your wallet. Or there's a lot of stuff you could do, and I don't want to you know go too crazy because I know it confuses people. Yeah. Um, but essentially, then. An NFT, when you produce one, every time it sells for the rest of its life, which could totally surpass all of our lives, you still make a percentage on every sale, even if you're not the owner of it, but you're okay. the person. Now, let's say <clears throat> for this, let's say you, I need two million. How are you? How do you go about getting the two million? And what do people get in return for their investment? Depends on what they create for you. Yeah, it's I mean, literally right, anything. We're it's... inventing the wheel with this, like. Right. Anything goes. I mean, but how do you advertise? What do you do? Do you walk in the street saying, I need $2 million? I, I mean, hire your husband. What do you think I do? <laughs> so you and, get- and Eileen, the, the dick, she can tell. And so, you know, I trust her for that. <laughs> well, we, had a, we had a guy on the show um, with... Uh, oh, wait a minute. Don't, aren't you doing a movie now that's an FF... Whatever the fuck it is, FFT? No. no I thought no, you were doing one. No. no? You have to just listen now. Don't ask questions because you're not going to get it anyway. And so mm-hmm. let's let like everybody else who will get it kind of like get yeah, but it. I want two million but dollars. We had we had a guy on the show who uh, he developed the lips, uh, the tongue and lips for the Rolling Stones. Nice. Uh, and so he sold his original art as an NFT. Um, this is like almost a year ago already, probably like when it was uh, I just really hearing about it. And he sold it for one point three million dollars. Mm-hmm. Um um, so NFT is definitely and, and I have to commemorate you, Stacy, because like I've probably only known you like two years, or whatever. But you were talking about NFTs and, and bitcoins and stuff way before, like anybody else you I know, was, ever I was, was doing Eileen, it. Like you should tell all the artists to get in there for NFTs. And she was like, well, I don't really know how to explain it or, you know, it's just not. But I knew and I could tell and see what was going to happen. So I just never gave up on it. And. So, you guys, if you have a really cool something that you want to do as an NFT, you should actually uh, follow NFT Drop LLC on Instagram or uh, Stacy and and send them a message because they're like the leaders in the NFT metaverse. You know, Stacy's been doing it longer than everybody. You know, there's a lot of companies popping up all over the place trying to do it, but their company is like the leader in it and they know what they're doing. Um, I, I, yeah, I, they're going to get me two million. <laughs> and uh, and so you definitely need to. Uh, like if you want to do it, and it can be like all kinds of things. I know that um, uh, people who make movies do it, NFTs, people who have cool memorabilia, so rock wait a stars. Minute, hang on, if you knew about this, why why are you making me suffer to get the money for my movie? Because it's not what? it's not that easy to go get two million dollars as an NFT. You have to have something. If that guy got a million five for a pair of lips. My movie is a hell. Yeah, of but it's a the lot most better. iconic piece of art, like in the what, music somebody's world. Somebody's lips. Huh? So I'll, it's the I'll, Rolling Stones lips. It's they're the most iconic well, you know band what? in the I'm world. Gonna, I'm going to make a cast of my penis and sell that. How's that? You can All do right. That. Now you're there talking you value. But you value. That's how up. they do it. You've got to show up. Okay. You cannot disappoint. Um, um, but ugh. yeah, no, there's different platforms for all of that stuff. Yeah. And I mean, literally, there are so many endless ideas and things that we could utilize. And I know that I'm pretty good at coming up at a lot of with a lot of that different stuff with ideas and and he's very good at the business side of stuff. Our chief technical technical officer, he's been in the NFT game and with Bitcoin since it first started. So we we really have a really great team of people that are just so good at their 
you know, positions right. and it just really works well because nobody wants to fight and have drama because I don't do what he does. Our CTO doesn't do what we do and we don't want to. That's why we're all do separate stuff. That's so right. great. Right. So it, it works out perfect. It's mm -hmm. just to say this, that's the separator between our company and other NFT companies. Yes. If you look at the NFT owners or partners, it's usually just uh, technical people. You know, if you look at our company, you have a marketing special the best specialist right here. We have our CTO, Ron uh, Rod. He is tremendous on what he does. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have an extensive business experience myself. So in sales also. So between the three of us, we have a niche of all different parts of a market for a business to where when we approach the product, we approach it in a total different way, not just in a technical way. That's why a lot of people look at an NFT and they're thinking about just art. Yeah. Uh, Ron is simple. It's not just art. What's worth, uh, what makes the NFT mainly valuable is the value that you add to it. Mm -hmm. So let it be a physical item. Let it be an apparel. Let it be a, a autograph photograph or an autograph piece. Let it be the actual physical art mm -hmm. in a canvas that you're getting, right? Let it be um, an additional 10, 20% donation to a great nonprofit organization from the mm -hmm. gross sales of the NFTs, right? So you got to give the person that's buying value. Now, some people buy it because they want the physical stuff besides the digital stuff. Mm -hmm. A person like me, from a business background, I look at it as an investment, okay? So when I buy it, I don't claim the physical items or whatever benefits they give me. I leave it alone because when I resell it mm -hmm. later as my own collectible, I'm reselling it with all the values that came with it. So now it's worth a lot more than if I took the autograph mm -hmm. picture out of it, put it on my desk, and I'm trying to sell just a digital image as an art, you see? That's that just true. values the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And every time you people sell it, the original creators make a royalty. So the NF, the nonprofits in turn make royalty. Oh, Your yeah. movie would in turn continue to make money so you can make a sequel if you did them really well. Um, so it's no. kind of like a pyramid. No, no not no. at all. It's, it's like stocks and bonds. Right. Because then stocks are in there and then bonds are physical, what you can hold. Even no, though they how, how are you compared to like saying eBay? No, it's not like no, eBay. No. No. Not. Listen, there are plenty of people. That we have 5 million viewers, okay? Out of the 5 million, we have a lot of people like me who have no idea what's going on in this world today. We lived 50 years ago. So please, you can get a lot of new people if you are specific. And don't pity me. Understand me. When you're 82 years old, I hope you understand what they do to you in those days. No, you're gonna, being nice. You're no, no, I nice. love you. I love you. No, no, I love you. Such I'm, a huge world that you like I'm you'll gonna, never I'm, understand. I'm gonna simply this is the kind of conversation wait, that you can't have in 30 minutes. So wait, we want to just I'm, do no, basics. Wait, I'm gonna simplify it. I have an 04 Audi TT custom uh, car convertible that's very, very classic and very valuable. There you now, go. I want to sell it. So okay. I, give, I give it to you and you sell it for me. You and give then, me an image, yes. Then, you can give them an image. Right. But so you, you, you get me 25000 we'll say. Then, then that, that. that person sells it for 50000 You get a royalty out of that. Mm -hmm. Oh really? So I get yes. out of the, so I can make money twice on it. You, you can, can make, make money. money resells every I time it resells. Right. Oh, you can make money very clear to me now. Now you cleared it up. Okay. So every time this product sells, if it belongs to you, every time the product sells, you make money on it. I like if, that. If it sells again, right. it has. So to my be movie, selling. my movie would make money, of course, because it's a feature film. It's going to go in movie theaters, and it will make money all over the world in foreign market as well as DVD. Yeah, but you can't sell that until after it's done. You no, have I know, to have a I know product that. No, no, no. I'm, I'm just saying, no, Jimmy. We have blockchains for things like that now. So right. the one company that, you know. Oh, he'll we, never get that. No, but wait, no, wait, see, Jimmy, <laughs> don't interrupt me. So if my movie makes a million dollars, we'll say. Yeah. The people that invested in it will make money on that million. But if when it goes worldwide, if it makes a hundred million, those people get back an investment that's different though, because that's not an yes. NFT. That's, yes. your, that's just a regular movie, right? <laughs> that's mm -hmm. like a product. They can buy movie. it and then have their name in the credits, you know, at the end. And the purpose of buying the token is to have their name in your credits. As there you go. Yeah, but if, if a DVD is made of my movie, 
Yes. Every time that yeah. DVD no. is sold, nobody you makes don't a want play. a DVD. Nobody watches DVDs anymore. But you know for example I mean. purposes, ACR, yeah. whatever the hell they call right. it. Right. Ron, for ex example purposes, as far as the DVD that has nothing to do with the NFT, okay? But now when you do the NFT, you can be selling anything. You could be selling portions or percentages of rights to your movie. But they're worth okay? money. Which people will be interested because when they, let's say they buy an NFT for $250. Okay. And that gives them like a quarter of a percent of, of for your movie. Right. When your movie goes out on theaters, that's when revenue st uh, is shown and that's what okay. makes it value. So people are buying mm -hmm. it for the future investment. Right. So that's why it's like a stock or a bond. Yes. You're investing on something that right. you're looking to make. Either you love what they're giving you personally right. Or you're buying it as an investment to be able to make more money later. Mm -hmm. And that's where the resales come in. And that's where the royalties come in. But it works similar to when you have a DVD, a movie and a DVD. And every time they sell a DVD, you get a royalty. Same mentality, same process well, in a way. Kind okay. of because you're also taking out the middleman of distribution. Right. right. Because, um, now now I understand. You don't have to worry about them marking things off right. for marketing. Yeah forever like Lionsgate like Lionsgate's never made a profit and they never will right. like so, well, yeah. I don't like Lionsgate anyway but any, <laughs> but no 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 there goes I, that one <laughs> all right no I, to, I, to, I, to, I totally understand now what your company's about see it takes a little while but but a, lot, a lot of people my age had difficulty I'm sure if I ran this by my friends on Long Island my man, I wonder if they know I'm gonna call them later and see if they know what you guys are what all about is. maybe well, I'm Ron, just the only dumbbell let hmm. me tell you we are uh, working on an actual uh, simplified movie not mm -hmm. movie but video really sorry video uh, to where he's going to explain these things, how it works, even on layman's terms. So like that, people can come to the website and be able to watch mm -hmm. it and be able to understand what it is, how it works, and the possibilities and all that stuff. Hey, so what, what, what's, the website? what's the website? Well, the, the other thing that we're doing, because they're not going to be up yet, but we are collaborating with um, Kevin Smith for his very first film festival in August. And then we're also collaborating with another company that we work with called Filmio mm -hmm. that is the only um, secure like blockchain company for film and distribution on the blockchain. Um, and they're really, really... Um, I can't wait until it comes out all of the stuff that they're like putting into play. But oh. for example, the, the film festival in, in August, we're going to be doing certain NFTs, offering the NFTs, you know, as prizes, making mm -hmm. like the tickets or something NFTs because it's the first year for one that they want to continue, um, you know, just bringing value to that platform, but it helps, especially indie artists and people making movies because now you don't get screwed like everybody else does. I mean, we've all made indie films. You'll never see money from that. And if you do, it's probably because you know somebody because they'll mark that stuff off until forever. I know Predator took 27 years for them to pull in their first check because the executive producer said on the 25th anniversary DVD that he got his first check just a couple months prior to that. That so no, money on the back end is like forget about it. I know, right. but it's, that's why it's nobody. Fantasy. Now wait a minute. One, 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 all of that. Yes. One, one, one more question. So now, if I make profit on the goodies, do I pay tax? Yes, you do, and mm -hmm. you will be paying capital gains tax, which is much lower than income tax. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's, okay. it's 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 tax as a investment, like a stock or a bond, or you can keep it in the crypto world. And, and pay nothing. Pay but, nothing because yeah. it's it's on the blockchain, which isn't the United States or monitored or governed by anyone, which is why you have to be careful with a lot of stuff too. But utilizing all of you know specific platforms and knowing where to go, they are ready to handle that kind of stuff. And so that's right. the people that we work with. I have a question. How long do you think it'll take before you get my two million? No, no. Before <laughs> how long do you think it'll <laughs> take? Look good, Ron. Uh, <laughs> How long do you think? How, how long do you think it'll take for cryptocurrency and all this NFT to be more main? Like right now, like nobody really. You guys understand it because you're like it's your business and you understand it. Um, I would imagine if you went out and asked, you know, a hundred people, probably three of them might know something about it. Like people don't really know. How long do you think it'll take before it becomes more like mainstream? That it is like a mainstream currency. 
Uh, I know it's a mainstream currency, but I mean a popular mainstream currency where everybody's like participating in it. Well, Walmart, for example, is going to be rolling out within the next you know few months their metaverse, which is going to also offer um, everything in the Walmart stores. It's going to offer everything from healthcare to loans to um, you know financial uh, different opportunities and things like that. They are they Amazon, Apple, Nike. Everything that you can imagine, it's already on the metaverse. People are shopping on the metaverse, getting clothes from H&M on the metaverse. It's been happening. Like, this isn't, you know, I know, like, the older generation. We're just old. Yeah, we're just old. But, but you have to <laughs> right. evolve in certain things because now the president just signed a thing saying that our money is going to turn into cryptocurrency. And so is the rest of the world. Of course. I'm sorry. It is happening. Nobody wants to learn new things and have to evolve. But it's it's ultimately to make more money for everybody else too in the future. Whereas like the dollar that. like would go down because other people are hoarding it under their mattresses in mm -hmm. South America and all these other countries. And we have to print more than putting us in more debt. Now every single thing will be accounted for on the blockchain. Right. Like and it has to be verified by between all these different note holders. So nobody could screw, you know, people out of mm -hmm. What needs to be done because a million other computers now have that information and they're not going to. And, and it's let right. it happen. The, the mm -hmm. information is share. OK, look at it this way. It's been over 30 years since the World Bank in key countries from G7 been looking at how to um, convert into convert us all into electronic currency. Mm -hmm. It, it wasn't able to be done back then. The you know the internet was not invented. Uh, right. People believe on physical things that mm -hmm. I can touch and have. Okay, so now they've been working on this for like I said for decades. Now this is the next economic evolution. Uh, people are ready now to start uh, being confident due to online banking, ATMs, and all mm -hmm. of that. Okay, to trust the electronic numbers. Mm -hmm. Now the difference between crypto. And the world we live in now here, let's say, for example, the United States, okay, is that the United States is a centralized system, okay, is, is owned or controlled by a certain corporation or identity, right? Mm -hmm. If your money's on PNC, PNC is the one that owns all the information of where your money is and where they're moved. The crypto world is a decentralized uh, market, which means... No single person has the information. The information is is uh, distributed throughout the whole network. So you can find out anything. Everything is trackable. Mm -hmm. So now you can hoard dollars in Colombia from, you know, back like back in the 80s from all the coke and never bring it back here. So we need to print <laughs> more money. Right. No, that right. was well, guys. That, that's a huge problem. That's what yes. value our money more than anything else. Right. right. Because if you have enough, uh, remember, it used to be called a silver certificate. They have yes. silver, gold, or jewels to back each dollar. Yes. So the example is, to keep it simple, I print a hundred dollar bill, a hundred single dollar bills, because that's how much silver, gold, or jewels I have to back it up. Now, Ron ran to Colombia, and he took 25 of those dollars, right? So, Jimmy, the end of the month came. We got to pay the bills. Because he don't pay the bills, right? He already said that, so he ain't worrying about it. <laughs> but now you're like, shit, I only have $75. I need $100 to pay the bills. So guess what? Gil, do me a favor. Print me $25 more. Okay, I do that. Now the dollar is not worth a dollar because you don't have enough gold, silver, or jewels. To back it. To back it up if everybody cashes it in. So that creates inflation. Mm -hmm. Okay? And the dollar drops. When the dollar drops, because it's the world's mm -hmm. currency... Everything else go up, your food, your oil, your petroleum, you name it, construction, mm -hmm. you know, your oh, paycheck it. now is no longer $500, hypothetically. Now you're really making $475. Okay? So hang, hang on one sec, because we've only got a minute, and I want you to say hi to Jason Taylor real quick. Hey, Jason! Uh, Yay! Uh, he's in you. there. We, yeah, Jason's the coolest, and uh, uh, I, I think that this is the most fascinating, like, thing ever, and I, um, I, I think that... I read about it all the time. I read all the news things, but I didn't really always understand it. At the coupon thing really helped me a lot, actually. Even he didn't uh, get it, so I don't feel um, so bad. I know you're not supposed to feel bad. Nobody get a lot Listen, of people. I don't, don't get give it. a shit about any of it. Where's my two million? <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, Jim. Jimmy's the producer of my movie, so he's going to be talking to you guys. If you could really get me two million, I'm in. 
we'll we'll we'll, we'll be talking. Ron. We'll yes. talk, but we'll talk. you know, talk we'll, to, Ron talk, is a case study, everybody. So don't come bombarding us. Yeah, yeah I know. Don't. Uh, yeah, like, that's, uh, that's not really how it works, you guys. Ron's just well, like well, always well. hooked up on the movie thing. So you guys, listen. If you want to learn more information, or if you have something that you think would make a great NFT, especially if you're, you know, you. I mean, I, I always just go to memorabilia because I know memorabilia works for people because right. I've seen it happen. Yeah. Check out NFT Drop LLC on Instagram. Follow Stacy Toy. It's uh, S T A C E Y. T O Y on Instagram or Twitter and Gills is uh, at Gill underscore L A U R E I R O. Um, you guys, I think it's amazing. You guys check out NFT yeah. Drop. Um, check out the ones that they just did with Rusty uh, Rusty Gilligan and um, and we want to thank you guys for coming on and we'll have to do it again actually because it went so fast. I can't believe how it went so fast. It's like we just got into it. it it's already time to go. Totally interesting and yes, I did get the gist of it. I yeah, I understand it and I think it's a good deal. And I think that it, it, it it's sad that I mean I I you know I haven't touched money in thirty five years. Jimmy will tell he you. He won't that. touch money because it's dirty. No, I saw you'll, a doctor. You'll, you'll, <laughs> you'll never touch it with Chris crypto neither. Trust yeah, me. Yeah, you don't touch no, it. No, no, I saw a documentary. It's very hygienic. <laughs> I saw a documentary years ago go about what was on a dollar bill, and I stopped touching it ever since. You gotta like it's All funny. Right, well, he, he doesn't touch yeah. it. So you oh, guys, Stacy and Gil, thank hey, you listen, guys. You Check out NFT back. Drop. We'll have them come back, you guys, you and we'll spend more time because it's amazing. And this way, thank I'll, you for I'll, having us. I'll shut my big mouth. We won't do jokes. We'll just go right into you talking intelligently about what is it called? NFT. No, we want NFT. Your oh, I got it right. We NFT. Questions. You know. We got, I mean? we like anyway, I'm glad about your romance. I think oh yeah, me too. You guys, congratulations. Yeah. You're a beautiful <laughs> couple. All right, you guys. Thanks everybody. Everybody for tuning in. Thank you, Roxy. Thank you. We'll see, see you guys, guys next week, everybody. Bye bye. Bye. Yeah, we in the mix. Yeah, we in the mix, it's another episode Here we go, the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell Interviewing the hottest, newest, and truest of today's celebrities Make sure to subscribe so you can get notified weekly Jimmy Star, he's the king of cool Ron Russell, he's a gorgeous dude Chat room is live and you would be a fool Not to vibe with us at the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell So come watch it live on W4CY Radio Miss some past episodes, download on iTunes The Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell It's the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell Oh.